Hi folks, I'm Marty and I'd like to show you my EV3 line follower. I've seen a few online, but none work quite so well on the new EV3 map. So I thought I'd make this one up. It's not the fastest you'll find, but it's accurate and it's got a really good alg algorithm. And it's a good start for you to build on, or especially for those people who have been pulling their hair out, trying to work out how a line follower works with the new EV3 mats. So basically the machine I'm using is the EV3 Everstorm Tracker. So I'm going to be using the color feedback um, sensor, um, just a stock standard, nothing special. I have added a touch sensor over here, but we're not using that for this example. So what we're trying to do is use the tracker to follow the red line around the new EV3 mat. So as you'll see, the EV3 mat has a few quirks to it. The first one is that the red line is not continuous around the outside. So we need to create an algorithm to make sure that we compensate for that. One of the other quirks I found with the mat is that um, the EV3 logo here, the text is red and you'll get a, a strange movement here. The actual tracker will move around this way and then back onto the line, but that's just what we've got. Um, another, another quirk with this mat that the previous NXT or other tutorials I've seen online this mat actually has some pretty sharp turns. So a lot of the algorithms I've seen used for a black mat are great for following a long radius curve, but now we've got these sharp turns, it's much harder to use. So after experimenting with the reflected light intensity reading, we've discovered um, it's, a, it's a much better feedback system. So, what, so how that actually works is that when you're on white, it reads 100%. When you're on the darker colors, it reads like around 20%. So we've written an algorithm that basically looks for 50% and stays on that 50% line, which just happens to be the red line. So red isn't 50, it just happens to be in halfway between the bright and the dark. And this works really well um, around the points where there's no red line because on the, on the white side it reads 100, on the gray carpet it reads a lower 20, and 50 somewhere in between. So that's how we get around the algorithm problem of not reading a color, we're just reading the shadow. So with the algorithm itself, what we're doing is we detect um, whether the RLI in, uh, measurement is above 50 or less than 50. So if it's above 50, it's probably over here. If it's below 50, it's probably over here. So basically what we're going to do is say, if we're too bright, we move to the left. And if we're too dark, we move to the right. And after we've executed that, we then move forward a, a small space and then repeat the loop. And that basically um, gets us around the mat. And that's basically it. A few things that we did find, um, a lot of programs online will actually have both motor, motors moving at once. And then as it goes offline, it'll move and turn. The problem with that is that you'll get these large radius arcs. So with the tank move, what we've actually done is instead of moving forward and turning, we've actually got our tracker to spin on the spot. So we've actually had, had to use negative steering on one track and that, and that works really well. And that works most effectively up here on the sharp turns. Most other algorithms would see the tracker moving in a much larger arc around here. Whereas what we want to do is we want to stay on it and, and rotate on top of the red line. So um, the tracker move with negative feedback or negative steering in one motor works really well. So let's jump on the computer and have a look what we've written. So here's the program we've written in LabVIEW. It's very simple. We've got a switch loop inside an unlimited loop. So basically we're reading the reflected light intensity. If it's less than 50, we want to move the tank to the right with some negative steer and some positive steer. And we want to move forward about 30. And then if it's greater than 50, we do the opposite, so we move right. We go negative steer one way, positive steer the other way, and move 30. Once you've executed that loop, we then move forward 10, and then repeat the process. That's all I've got. Credits to my mate John, who finally cracked the coding after several hours of testing. Have fun with it, and let me know how you go. Um, let me know how you build on this to make a better tracker. It'd be really cool. I haven't learned how to do timers yet, so if you can show me how to do a timer and put it in here, maybe we can have a race. Maybe we can start it at the, at the brown brick at the start of the track and see so if you can get a faster time. Um, let me know how you go, leave a comment below and have fun. Catch ya.